The second segment of the nightly news is brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better. Welcome back. COVID survivor Miguel Clifford shares his story of survival. He explained that his infection with COVID-19 was a harrowing experience and he implores all St. Lucians to take all precautions to avoid that life-threatening illness. I'm Miguel Clifford. I look like a very healthy, healthy person, but I got COVID. Well, it's one morning I got up, I was coughing a lot and I started sweating. So my people decided to tell me, well, you should go to Tapia and get a, a PCR test done. I was a little hard at it. I thought it was just a normal, a little cold because I must have slept with the AC or, or something. So then I still decided to go. When I went in, Dr. King, after doing the test, he called me in, put me to sit down on a side and told me, um, I have some sad news that you tested positive for COVID. I was like, wow. I got to Starfish on the Saturday afternoon about 1, 3, 2 o'clock. They examined me, they took my pressure, my pulse, everything. Then they put me in the room, they told me that I cannot get out of the room. Anything I need, I just have to call the reception, they're going to bring it. People are going to attend to me, so I should be fine. I said, okay. I spent Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the cough started getting worse. I had a diarrhea, which was, I couldn't control. Every time I cough, I would pass out on me. So I called the nurse, I told her that I'm coughing heavy. So um, can you give me something for the coughing and for the diarrhea and the pain, because and the pain I'm having. And I'm, I'm lying down because I'm the only one in the room. I'm sweating for about five hours straight. Sweating, sweating, wipe myself, take out t-shirt, wring it, put it outside, on the, open the door, slide it, get dry, take another one. And then they called me to me, okay, the doctor prescribed something for me, so uh, if I could get somebody to come and buy it for my time, no problem. I, I called my niece, which lives in Rodney Bay. She went to pick it up, she bought it, she dropped it off. They dropped it off in the room. Some inhalers and some antibiotic and stuff, cough syrup, I started taking it. About two days after that, I started feeling, it was, the coughing was getting worse. So I was on the phone with a friend, and she told me, but Miguel told me, you're wheezing. I said, what's reason to say that like you're gasping for, for air? I said, really? She said, yes, but you're talking to me and I could hear. I said, nah, man, I'm fine. She said, no, Miguel, you, you have a problem breathing. She said, later this evening, when the doctors and the nurses pass by, tell them that you have a little problem breathing to hear what they're going to say. Then the nurses pass at 7, a little after 7, they check my temperature. And when they checked me, they realized that my oxygen was low in my blood. Then they tell me, okay, they're going to have the doctor to come and check me out. I do hear from them again. I call them and they tell me, they got an ambulance, it's on its way, so it will be there shortly. So I got myself ready, I pack up my stuff, I take a little shower, and I waited for them. Then, then they called me about 11, 13, going up to 12. They told me, the ambulance is there, can I make it to the lobby? I told them, no, if they have a wheelchair, they tell me they didn't have a wheelchair. I said, well, okay, I'm coming. I asked God for a little strength because I was weak. So I walked out of the, the room, I walked towards the lobby, I met them at the lobby, they put me on the stretcher. They take my vitals again before I left. They put oxygen on me, and then they took me to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, like I got to the hospital in time, at the minute I reached there, nurses and doctors on me, oxygen, and they start putting um, things on my chest to check my heart. They came and gave me blood thinner because they tell me that I was having, um, having blood clot, I could have get a heart attack. And they started giving me medication, they put me on drips. And that's when they said I spent two days in the ward nine, and then they took me to a, a lower room because they told me that I could start breathing because the oxygen became lesser because the pressure that they gave me when I got there, I realized the pressure got a little lesser. So they told me that I have to breathe on my own so that they're sending me to a lower room. While I was in the lower room, I had a couple complications with my white blood cells and red blood cells. It wasn't balanced enough. They gave me a lot of antibiotics to, to bring out. And I never had that problem before. I never had heart problem before. I never had blood problem. And then I spent 16 days at the hospital. I, the only people I, I got contacted at home that got the COVID was my wife and my two kids. None of my friends that I was around didn't get it. I, up to the like today, I don't know how I got it. I don't know if it's from money, because I deal with a lot of money. I don't know if it's somewhere I go and somebody touch me. I don't know. I always have my mask. I always have all my vehicles have hand sanitizer. Sanitize myself 24-7 and my home everywhere, the whole business everywhere have sanitizer. So I don't know where I pick it up. So it's, it's so easy to pick it up and you don't know until a couple of days 
when you start feeling sick. As St. Lucia continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, St. Lucia has received a much-needed donation of an oxygen tank from Martinique. More in this report. The Ministry of Health recently received an ISO tank of liquid oxygen from Martinique to assist with the surging in demand for oxygen at the respiratory hospital. The oxygen procured will be used to treat COVID-19 patients at the respiratory hospital. Medical Director at the Respiratory Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, says she is elated about the boost in oxygen supply given the greater demand for oxygen at the hospital. Oxygen therapy is a very important arm when it comes to treating COVID-19. And over the last few weeks, we have noticed an increase in the number of patients that are coming that are very ill, requiring more and more oxygen. It is a very expensive process to allow us to get it. Martinique has the cases as well to deal with. We actually had a boat from Dominica who came across to drop this tank for us and they too have to deal with the cases. So we're asking us St. Lucians, do what we need to do. Mask up, hand hygiene, isolate, um, vaccinate. If you have to vaccinate, you need to vaccinate, vaccinate. General Manager of Winwood Island Gases Limited, Lucas Lubin says, the fourth wave of COVID-19 has put a strain on their supply of oxygen and therefore must explore options to provide oxygen to the hospital. Normally, the hospitals, in particular Victoria Hospital, would have done um, say about 240 cylinders of our oxygen in almost two weeks. And right now, the demand is so high that we end up doing about 240 cylinders per day. And right now, as of two days ago, it has ramped up to 300 cylinders per day. It has put us a sort of a strain on our productive um, capacity. And because we do have a plant, and as well as we do import oxygen to compensate for any differences. And as a result of that um, significant demand, and, and so that we had to maintain that, uh, maintain supply in the hospitals, we ensured that we had a, 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 more tanks to be able to supply the hospitals, in particular, um, Victoria Hospital. The purchasing of the ISO tank of liquid oxygen was made possible through the efforts of the government of St. Lucia, Winwood Island Gases Limited, and the government of Martinique. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, I am Penal Neptune. Honorable Stevenson King, Minister for Infrastructure, expresses concerns over two major road construction projects currently under review, the Rodney Bay Road Improvement and the National Road Rehabilitation Projects. He notes irregularities in the undertaking of these projects, which were not in accordance with the guidelines of the Roads and Works Act. He has indicated that the government will take due action once the findings have been determined. These are two programs which were sourced through what we call a design finance construct arrangement, meaning that the contractors come to the table with the resources and based on an agreement, they deliver a product that is to the satisfaction of uh, the government. However, the modality of the project when it was, when it was implemented was one which, though channeled through the Ministry of Infrastructure, wasn't under the, if I should say, the clinical eye of the Ministry of Infrastructure. So in a number of ways, the projects were being undertaken with a project supervisor who did not report to the chief engineer. And so the, in, as far as legislation is concerned, the Works and Roads Act, the chief engineer didn't have the authority based on the manner in which the project was, was put together by the Ministry of Finance or the Minister of Finance to oversee the project technically, to ensure that the scope of the project were met, to ensure that all of the steps in construction and in engineering were kept. And therefore, what the review, which we will announce very shortly, is intended to do, is to ensure that we get value for money, and that um, the, the projects were being undertaken or are being undertaken within the framework of sound engineering um, framework. 
So if there's evidence that some of these irregularities you alluded to uh, can be substantiated, what action can can be taken or should be taken, in your opinion, against the those who sort of circumvented, mm -hmm. you know, the, the established conventions? Well, certainly actions can be taken. It's how far the government wants to go with those actions. Uh, if in, in case what we the Ministry of Infrastructure is proposing is to do a technical and financial review um, highlights highlights some of those shortcomings, then the ministry or the government rather may decide to go into a full forensic audit, which will certainly be even more clinical and scientific at arriving at where the problems or the fault lines exist. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The second segment of the nightly news was brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better.